Keith 44 here with some lovely 44 Magnum revolvers on the bench today. Each one of these is a Smith & Wesson Model 629. Obviously having some differences between them, most importantly different barrel lengths because today I am going to measure and compare the muzzle velocities of a couple different hand loads in each one of these guns. We'll refer to these two different hand loads as light and heavy for today. Both of them are shooting this bullet, which is a 260 grain cast bullet. This is a clone of the Lyman 429-421. The mold is made by Accurate Molds, mold 43-250J. I'll give you a look at that. I picked this up used and it does throw some excellent bullets. Both of these hand loads, we're gonna shoot in each gun, measure the velocities and compare them. What we can expect to see is the longer the barrel, the higher the muzzle velocity. And that's because powders need time to burn. They don't um, detonate. They have different burn rates. They need a certain amount of time to fully burn. So the longer the barrel, the more time the powder has to burn before the bullet leaves. In a shorter gun, the bullet is going to leave before all of the powder gets to burn. So any of that powder that burns after the bullets left the barrel isn't really doing us any good. Let's take a look at each of these individually. If you've watched any of my videos, you've seen this right here, 629 Classic with an eight and three inch, inch barrel. This is a dash three. This is also a 629 Classic. This one has a six and a half inch barrel and this is a dash four. On both of these, I have these nice LPA target rear sights. This is a 629 Classic with a five inch barrel, uh, dash three, if you remember there for a second. This is a more modern production gun. This is a 629 dash six with a four inch barrel. I found this at a shop. Actually, it came from a range. I had to rescue it because I could tell people had tried to pry the slide side, sorry, side plate off with a screwdriver or something. And I just thought, oh, I have to rescue you. Yeah, it's a newer production gun. I kind of prefer the older ones, but man, this thing shoots really well too. So let's get to it. All right, we have the gong set up at 50 yards. We're gonna start with the light load and we're gonna start with the shortest barrel gun and progress to the longest. Here we go. I had one that didn't go off, I'm going to try it again. There we go.
Okay. Let's see what we got. So the four inch gun, about a thousand feet a second. Five inch, 1048. Six and a half, average of 1075. And then with the eight and three eighths, an average of 1078, we didn't see a big jump. I'm gonna guess the reason for that is that it only takes about six and a half inches of barrel for all the powder to burn. I'm using eight grains of tight group for that load. Eight grains is a relatively small amount and tight group is a relatively fast burning powder. So that's probably why we're not seeing any sort of increase once we bump up to the eight and three eighths. Now we're gonna go back through same process, same order for the guns, and we're gonna shoot the heavier load for this bullet. Little bit of recoil out of that one. All right, on to the five inch. Now the six and a half. I still got the velocities, but I need to sight this thing in. And now the eight and three eighths. All right. So if I go back down to the four inch with the heavy load. Eleven seventy five. The five inch is twelve thirty. Thirteen inch. Sorry. The six and a half inch says thirteen oh four is an average. And then with the eight and three eighths, we're at 1306 feet per second as the average velocity at the muzzle out of five shots. All right, we got the revolvers back on the bench here. Wanted to talk about those velocity numbers a little bit. Firstly, that good or consistent velocities aren't necessarily an indication of accuracy or bullet performance on target, especially if we're talking about hunting but they are a useful and interesting piece of data we can collect. 
I developed both of those loads for this gun, and I've shot them in these guns, I think. Maybe not all of them. And I'd been wanting to measure the velocities of those two in these guns for a while. I think it's interesting that the light load, the eight grains of tight group going from the four inch gun all the way to the eight and three eighths, we only see a 75 feet a second increase. And probably what I found most interesting today was on that heavier load using IMR 4227 that I didn't get a higher velocity out of this gun. These two were very similar. Now, I also found out today that I need to shoot this gun more because I had some problems there and they were all my fault. So, you know what? I think I'm going to go shoot this one a little bit. That's a little better.